Could the pie win the Grand National? Velvet Brown, who do you think you are? I'm the owner of the pie. Tinseltown, where fame and fortune often mask a deeper reality. Behind the glitz and glamour lie tales of diabolical masterminds and cold-hearted actors who have immortalized unforgettable stories on the silver screen. But here's the catch. The judgment isn't solely ours to make. Brace yourself to delve into the sinister narratives of the 10 most notorious actors in Hollywood's past. Aren't you in prison? No. Armed robbery. Number 10, Henry Fonda. For more than five decades, Henry Fonda endeared himself to audiences as the quintessential embodiment of American virtue on the silver screen. From his poignant portrayal of a migrant worker in The Grapes of Wrath to his compelling role in Twelve Angry Men, Fonda epitomized the beloved everyman of Hollywood. However, beneath the facade of the all-American hero lay a troubled and tormented private world, unveiled in a startling new biography. Co-author Darwin Porter unveils the hidden aspects of Fonda's off-screen persona, exposing him as a flawed husband and father. Contrary to his public image, Fonda was self-absorbed, uncomfortable with displaying emotions, and far from the lovable figure he appeared to be. The revelation? Fonda's history of infidelity spanning four of his five marriages. Yes, you read it correctly. Henry Fonda, the embodiment of traditional American values on screen, lived a life that strayed far from those ideals. Fonda's personal journey was marked by a series of dalliances with Hollywood's leading ladies, including Joan Crawford, Marlene Dietrich, and Barbara Stanwyck. His enduring love affair with Lucille Ball was touted as the pinnacle of his romantic life, yet he remained unfaithful throughout the majority of his marriages. Despite his portrayal as a devoted family man, Fonda's children, Jane and Peter, often felt neglected by their father. From a turbulent beginning with actress Margaret Sullivan, where she openly critiqued his prowess in the bedroom, to subsequent failed marriages and extramarital affairs resulting in divorces, Fonda's personal life was anything but a Hollywood fairy tale. Sullivan's struggles with mental health and eventual tragic demise further cast a somber shadow over Fonda's relationships. Number 9. Bing Crosby the actor isn't just renowned for his legendary voice and timeless classics like White Christmas. He's also a figure veiled in mystery and controversy, particularly concerning his family life. At first glance, Bing Crosby appeared to embody charm and charisma. However, behind the curtain, his relationship with his children paints a contrasting narrative. Let's delve into his initial family dynamic. Bing led a hectic life juggling movies, radio shows, and music commitments. His son Gary Crosby once disclosed how Bing was seldom present during their upbringing. Bing harbored a fear of his children succumbing to the typical Hollywood lifestyle, further estranging them. His fixation on shielding them from Tinseltown's allure ultimately strained their bond. It wasn't until his second marriage that Bing seemed to reassess his paternal role. Yet his struggles with emotional expression persisted. Despite his iconic stature, Bing Crosby's personal life bore imperfections. The tragic passing of his son Lindsay and battles with alcoholism illuminated fame's darker underbelly. Bing Crosby's stoic demeanor endured until the end. Even in his final moments on a golf course in 1977, as recounted by Nathaniel Crosby, Bing remained reserved, prioritizing a great game of golf over emotional expression. Number 8. Wallace Beery Despite the carefully crafted public image of Wallace Beery as a warm-hearted everyman, meticulously shaped by studio publicity, the truth behind the scenes was far from endearing, as disclosed by fellow actors and crew members. Contrary to his on-screen persona, Beery's treatment of his colleagues, particularly young performers, was notoriously harsh. Incidents of physical aggression towards juvenile actors like Mickey Rooney exposed the grim underbelly of Hollywood's golden age. Despite enduring such mistreatment, Mickey Rooney surprisingly expressed admiration for Wallace Beery, revealing a nuanced and complex relationship between the two. Rooney's perspective sheds light on the intricate dynamics of working alongside Beery. Simultaneously, Gloria Swanson's early encounter with Beery unveils the unsettling power dynamics prevalent in Hollywood. Despite the significant age gap and Swanson's discomfort, Beery's influence loomed large over their interactions. Wallace Beery's off-screen demeanor, starkly contrasting with Hollywood glamour, 
was marked by unattractiveness and repulsion, even towards those closest to him. Swanson's purported aversion underscores the glaring dichotomy between Beery's public facade and private reality. Number seven, Milton Berle. This individual stood as a pioneer of his era, captivating millions with his sharp wit and undeniable charm. His weekly television program became a cultural phenomenon, so influential that businesses would halt operations to ensure their clientele didn't miss a single episode. Each week, countless viewers eagerly tuned in to witness the zany antics of Uncle Milty. His popularity soared to such heights that, at the pinnacle of his fame, reports surfaced of decreased movie ticket sales and some establishments shuddering during his broadcast to ensure patrons wouldn't miss a moment. However, as time progressed, the luster on Burley's star began to dim. In a bold move, he was enlisted to host Saturday Night Live, a decision met with skepticism by the show's creator, Lorne Michaels. Despite initial doubts, Burl took center stage, but the outcome proved disastrous. His exaggerated antics and reluctance to adhere to direction left the cast and crew flabbergasted. According to Kara Kovalchik, one of the program's most challenging hosts, Burl's incessant mugging for the camera and insistence on micromanagement resulted in an unforgettable SNL debacle. Following his ill-fated SNL appearance, Burl's legacy became tinged with tales of arrogance and self-importance. While he blazed trails in the early days of television, his conduct behind the scenes often fell short of expectations. Number six, Peter Sellers in Hollywood's classic comedies, Peter Sellers illuminated the screen as Inspector Clouseau, the hapless detective of the Pink Panther series. Yet, beneath the laughter and on-screen brilliance, lurked a troubled genius with whom director Blake Edwards found challenging to collaborate. Peter was, in a word, eccentric. He conversed with his deceased mother and carried her shrine wherever he went. Edwards, the creative force behind the Pink Panther films, grappled with Sellers' erratic behavior. Sellers' unpredictable mood swings and deep-seated insecurities clashed with Edwards' methodical approach, causing turmoil behind the scenes. Sellers believed that his wild antics fueled his creativity, fearing that without such spontaneity, the comedy would suffer. His unconventional methods frequently disrupted filming, leaving Edwards exasperated. There were periods when they went without speaking, resorting to communicating through their assistants. Despite their tumultuous relationship, their collaborations produced box office hits, including five Pink Panther films and the 1968 classic, The Party. Number five, Errol Flynn. Born in 1909 in Tasmania, Errol Flynn's upbringing was anything but conventional. Raised amidst the wildlife of kangaroos and Tasmanian devils, Flynn's adventurous spirit was ignited from an early age. However, trouble seemed to shadow him wherever he roamed. Expelled from school at 17, Flynn embarked on a journey to New Guinea, where he dipped his toes into various professions, ranging from diamond smuggling to pearl diving. His true calling emerged in the realm of acting. Driven by a hunger for stardom, Flynn ventured to England, leaving behind a trail of schemes and escapades. His knack for deception even landed him at the Stratford-upon-Avon Festival. Recognizing his potential, Warner Brothers swiftly recruited him, marking the commencement of Flynn's Hollywood odyssey. Flynn's time in the jungle took a pivotal turn during a harrowing ambush. Despite the chaos, this ordeal served as the catalyst for his acting career. Joel Swartz, a film executive, recognized Flynn's magnetism and cast him as Fletcher Christian in the 1933 film In the Wake of the Bounty. Yet, this was only the beginning of the tumultuous journey. However, in 1942, Flynn faced allegations of assault from young women, igniting a media firestorm that tarnished his reputation. Despite the trials and tribulations, Flynn's arrogance remained unyielding, even amidst the courtroom drama. Ultimately acquitted, Flynn's legacy embodies both triumph and tragedy. His escapades on and off screen solidified his status as a Hollywood icon, but also unveiled the darker side of fame and fortune. Number four, Orson Welles, actor, director, or whatever label you prefer. Orson Welles, a cinematic visionary renowned for groundbreaking films like Citizen Kane, harbored a lesser known dark side. Resurfaced from long lost tapes, Wells' candid conversations with friend and director Henry Jaglum unveil a contrasting facet of the Hollywood luminary. 
In these private recordings, Wells held nothing back, dubbing Laurence Olivier as dim-witted, Spencer Tracy as vindictive, and Charlie Chaplin as haughty. His disdain extended to Bette Davis, whom he admitted he couldn't bear to watch, and James Stewart, whom he criticized as a subpar actor. Despite his cinematic brilliance, Wells grappled with the constraints of the studio system, frequently encountering financial hurdles for his projects. His unwavering resolve led him to pursue filmmaking with limited resources, yet he remained resolute in his artistic vision. Wells's anecdotes shed light on his interactions with emerging talents like Marilyn Monroe, whom he endeavored to champion before her meteoric ascent to stardom. Even Hollywood power players like Daryl Zanuck dismissed Monroe as merely another stock player, a sentiment Wells found all too prevalent in Tinseltown. His disdain for actresses such as Bette Davis and Jennifer Jones reverberated through the tapes with scathing critiques of their abilities. He didn't mince words, labeling Jennifer Jones as irredeemable and writing off Bette Davis entirely. Number three, Faye Dunaway. In the glittering landscape of Hollywood where stars shine and dreams are spun, lurks a figure whose legacy resonates with tales of chaos and disdain. Faye Dunaway, renowned for her captivating performances, also etched a reputation as one of Hollywood's most troublesome personalities. Reports emerged of Dunaway's abrupt departure from the Broadway-bound play T at Five, accompanied by allegations of physical altercations and fostering a hostile environment. These rumors, it turned out, held truth. A first-hand account from someone who collaborated with Dunaway on a project revealed a disturbing incident. Rather than staging a slap during a scene, Dunaway purportedly struck this individual across the cheek for real, shedding light on the challenging atmosphere on set. Broadway wig designer Paul Huntley, who partnered with Dunaway in 1996, witnessed her volatile behavior. He recounted an incident where Dunaway expressed dissatisfaction with the presentation of hairpins, resulting in her slapping his assistant's hand. These anecdotes paint a portrait of a demanding and difficult actress. Beyond onset conflicts, Dunaway's off-screen conduct has fueled Hollywood lore. According to the book Easy Riders and Raging Bulls, during the filming of Chinatown, Dunaway allegedly engaged in peculiar habits, such as urinating into trash cans and displaying a disdain for flushing toilets in her dressing room. The book further claims that Dunaway once threw a cup of liquid purportedly filled with urine at director Roman Polanski during a disagreement. When confronted about this allegation, Dunaway dismissed it as utterly preposterous and declined to dignify it with a response. Dunaway's behavior has even shocked some notoriously difficult actors. James Woods, who shared the screen with her in The Disappearance of Amy, recounted an incident where she hurled an object at him for ad-libbing a line. Even Bette Davis, renowned for her fiery temperament, cited Dunaway when asked about the most challenging individuals in Hollywood. Number two, Mickey Rooney. His real-life demeanor stood in stark contrast to the wholesome characters he portrayed on screen. Described as blisteringly bombastic and exhibiting traits such as abrasiveness, nastiness, curtness, and rudeness, Rooney's behavior left much to be desired, particularly among those who worked closely with him. Even after filming concluded, his unprofessional conduct persisted, making it challenging to collaborate with him. In a particularly troubling incident during the filming of National Velvet in 1944, Rooney's treatment of Elizabeth Taylor drew criticism. Reports surfaced that he took advantage of the teenage star and later denied even knowing her, dismissing her as entitled and questioning her talent. Following Rooney's passing, revelations emerged about his unkind treatment and negative remarks regarding many of his colleagues throughout his career. This portrayal shattered the illusion of Rooney as the amiable character often depicted on screen, revealing the complexities of classic Hollywood figures. Criticism and animosity towards Mickey Rooney stemmed from various sources. His abrasive demeanor and egotistical attitude rubbed many the wrong way, leading to conflicts with co-workers, directors, and fans alike. His personal life, marred by multiple marriages, divorces, financial troubles, and struggles with substance abuse, further tainted his public image. Rooney's transition from child star to adult actor encountered challenges, with some critics doubting his ability to transcend his youthful charm 
and establish credibility in more mature roles. Additionally, his portrayal of Asian characters, notably in Breakfast at Tiffany's, ignited significant backlash for perpetuating harmful stereotypes and exhibiting racial insensitivity. Number 1. Kirk Douglas This man wasn't merely another pretty face. Growing up amidst turmoil, Douglas found solace in the limelight. Despite a turbulent home life, his passion for acting ignited during his high school years, where he not only discovered his love for the stage, but also the tangled web of scandal that would shadow him throughout his career. Douglas's personal life mirrored the complexity of his on-screen characters. His relationships and rumored affairs painted a portrait of a man torn between heroism and villainy. Yet, it was his larger-than-life persona that solidified his status as one of Hollywood's most notorious figures. Unfortunately, reports emerged of him mistreating Natalie Wood. Allegedly, the 15-year-old Wood was invited to Douglas's room where she purportedly spent hours before being abruptly dismissed and threatened if she spoke out. Although this account remains unverified, it surfaced publicly after Douglas's passing. As tributes to Wood flooded social media, Douglas was vilified as a degenerate. The truth remains elusive. Now that both Wood and Douglas are deceased, the full story may never come to light. Some speculate it could have been a fabricated tale attributed to various actors over time. Nevertheless, Douglas wasn't without flaws. He openly acknowledged being perhaps the most unpopular actor in Hollywood, attributing it to his challenging upbringing. Even his co-star Burt Lancaster jestingly remarked on his difficult nature. Additionally, Douglas admitted to infidelity in his relationships and was known for his controlling demeanor on movie sets. He famously dismissed the director of Spartacus after just one week and attempted to micromanage Stanley Kubrick during Paths of Glory. Nonetheless, these films ultimately achieved greatness. And that concludes our countdown of the 10 most evil actors in Hollywood history. Did your pick make the list? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more captivating content. Until next time.